Okay, in this video we're going to talk about how to solve a quadratic function uh, by factoring. But specifically we're going to look at quadratic functions that are binomials. In a different video I looked at ones that were trinomials and we, we did some strategies there, but I want to do some binomial ones. I want you to look at specifically two different types, okay? Um, <clears throat> This type over here, we're going to, let's start with this one on the, on the right-hand side. This is what we call a perfect square binomial. Let me, let me say this again. A perfect, let me write this up here, perfect square binomial. Now, why is it a perfect square? Well, it's a perfect square binomial because, first of all, we know that a binomial means two terms, right, separated by an addition or subtraction. So there they are, this one and this one. And each of the terms is a perfect square. So x squared is just x times x. And 16 is 4 times 4. Now, here's the other characteristic of a perfect square binomial. It needs to be separated by a subtraction sign, okay? So it needs to have a subtraction sign and it needs to have two terms, both perfect squares. If you have that, then you can actually factor this pretty quickly and pretty easily, okay? When I see, again, this, I will just put down two different parentheses. I'll go plus and minus. J just trust me on this. We're just going to learn the pattern right now. So plus and minus. And then we're going to take the perfect square root of each. So x here and x in the front here. So both in the front and the 4 in the back. One here and one here. Now let's check this just to make sure that we did it correctly, okay? So let's just do a quick check, and we'll check it by doing a FOIL. All right, so x times x is x squared. x times negative 4 is negative 4x. 4 times positive, uh, uh, positive 4 rather, times x is plus 4x, and we'll see immediately that these cancel, right, when you put them together. And then positive 4 times negative 4 is minus 16. Sure enough, it's x squared minus 16. Now, when we were solving this, we would basically say, so this was just our check, but we say that in order to make this equal to 0, that means that x would either be equal to a negative 4. In order for this to be equal to 0, x would be equal to a positive 4. Okay, so that means that this particular binomial, if it were... A quadratic function, right, would cross the x-intercepts at negative 4 and at positive 4. Okay, now again, remember, both have to be, both terms have to be perfect squares and they have to be separated by a subtraction sign. Nothing else will work. Now, <clears throat> here's another example. When I look at this and I just go through these, through this checklist, right, um, I see that there are, it's a binomial, it does have a subtraction, but the two terms are not perfect squares. But be careful. You should always try to factor out any common factors first. So let me just write this off to the side. Factor out common factors first. Okay, so... When I look at 3x squared, uh, 3x cubed rather, I'm oh, sorry, I needed to do one more thing over here. There we go. When I look at 3x cubed and 12x, I ask myself, what is common in both of those terms, right? Well, I know that one of my factors that's common is a 3, right? Because 3 goes into 3, obviously, but 3 also goes into 12. And another common factor is one of the x's, right? So I have 1x here, and I have x cubed there. So I'm going to factor out 3x, and then I'm going to look and see what's left over, okay? So 3x times what gives me 3x cubed? And I know that the word answer is x squared. And I have my subtraction. 3x factored out of 
12x is just going to give me 4, isn't it? Well, look what that does. I now have a binomial that's a subtraction, and the both terms are perfect squares. So I can continue to factor doing exactly the same thing I just did over here. I'm going to put two parentheses. I'm going to go plus and minus. Remember, that's the pattern, always plus minus. And then you just take the factors. So x squared, x, and x. 4 would be 2 and 2. Now, <clears throat> remember, this is solving by binomials. This is perfectly factored, right? But now let's just make it a function. by making it equal to 0. Now remember that the 0 property says that one of these factors has to be 0 in order for the whole thing to be 0. So I have three factors here, not just two. So I'm going to say 3x equals 0, or x plus 2 equals 0, or x minus 2 equals 0. And I'm going to find the zeros for each one. So what times uh, 3 times what is it going to be equal to 0? So x could be equal to 0, and that would make that work. Negative 2 would make this one work, and a positive 2 would make this one work. Okay? So this parabola would... Actually, this is going to be like an up-and-down parabola. You're going to have two of them right next to one another, where x is 0, x is negative 2, and x is positive 2. Okay, I hope that was helpful to you.